Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q2 FY24 earnings conference call of Senza Technologies Limited, hosted by Moti Laloswal Financial Services Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Pritesh Thakkar from Motila Loswal Financial Services Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Everyone, uh, on behalf of Motila Loswal, I welcome you all to the Media Economy we have Mr. Uh, Manish Tandon, uh, CEO and Managing Director of Zentatec, Mr. Sachin Zute, uh, Chief Financial Officer, uh, and a few other members of the student management team. Before I hand over the call to Manish, I would like to highlight that the safe harbor statement uh, of the second part of the earnings presentation is presumed to be real and understood. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Vitesh. Uh, hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today to discuss Zensa's financial results for the second quarter for financial year 2024. With me on this call are a few distinguished colleagues, uh, Vijay Simha, uh, Chief Operating Officer, Sachin Zute, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Vivek Ranjan, uh, Chief CHRO. Our Q2 performance shows continued strength and demand for our service lines, particularly around experienced services, advanced engineering, data engineering, and analytics. Q2 revenue crossed 150 million, a sequential quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth of 0.6%. Our PAT registered a sequential quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth of 130 basis points and year-over-year -year growth of 940 basis points. Earnings per share saw so, so a growth of 11.3% quarter on quarter. Let me walk you through the high level performance of our geographies and verticals for this quarter. The Europe and South Africa region has shown good growth momentum on account of our service line diversification and new wins across long standing and new clients. We saw a decline in the US region due to project closures in a few key customers. On the vertical front, I would also like to take this opportunity to update that we will start tracking healthcare and life sciences as a separate vertical. In the last four quarters, we have identified certain key strength areas, healthcare being one of them. We see a long-term potential in healthcare and have already identified leadership around it. It is an existing business for us, and we have realigned our verticals to that effect. Apart from this, we have also realigned our other verticals in line with our leadership structure. Coming to the sequential QOQ constant currency growth for the vertical, our services revenue in banking and financial services grew by 3%. Manufacturing and consumer services grew by 6.7% while high-tech declined by 8.3% and healthcare and life sciences saw a decline of 1.7%. I am pleased to share that for the second quarter, our last 12 months attrition declined to 13.1%, a sequential improvement of 280 basis points. This quarter, we gave salary increases, which were better than the industry average and has been very well received by our associates across all levels. With that, I will now invite Sachin Zute, our Chief Financial Officer, to provide an update on some critical financial data. Thank you, Manish. Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining the call today. In addition to Manish talking about business, I will take you through some of the key financial metrics for the quarter ending September 23. The revenue for second quarter of FY24 stood at 150.2 million in US dollar terms, reflecting growth of 0.6% sequentially in reported terms and 0.2% in constant currency terms. Gross margin for the quarter stood at 
decrease of 180 basis point quarter on quarter. Decline was primarily due to wedge height impact of 190 basis points, reversal of one-time benefit of 80 basis points, which was mentioned in last, uh, last quarter's uh, earnings call. It was partially offset by the exchange gain of 30 basis points and utilization benefit of 50 basis points. SGNA has improved by 170 basis points. It has uh, impact of uh, 30 basis points. Uh, so, sorry, wedge height had impact of uh, 30 basis points on SGNA, which was compensated by a reduction in discretionary spend. Further, during the quarter, we had finalized our annual management bonus of FY23, which had a one-time positive impact of 160 basis points on SGN day. Normal SGN day has remained flat quarter on quarter basis. The data for the quarter was at 18.6%, lower by 10 basis points against last quarter. Net of one timer EBITDA, net of one timer, EBITDA would have been close to 17%. After Q2 of last fiscal, we have consistently improved our EBITDA margin. This was a result of rigorous efforts driven across the organization, which involved several tracks, including improving commercials, focus on service, uh, services revenue, optimization of subcon, improving utilization, control on attrition, reducing talent acquisition costs, resulting in a YOI improvement of approximately 10 percentage points on EBITDA. These measures have enabled us to make investments into focused areas of business. Our objective continues to maintain margins at mid-teens trajectory for the financial year, despite current demand softness. LTM attrition levels have shown continuous improvement over the quarter and stood at 13.1% for Q2 FY24. DSO for the quarter stood at 79 days. For the quarter index, cash and cash equivalents, including investment, stood at $227.1 million, 6.7 million decrease from last quarter. Quarter on quarter decline is due to advanced tax payment, dividend payout, and annual bonus payout of FY23 in Q2 FY24. Order book was 194.8 million for the current quarter. This also includes some spillover from previous quarter and certain renewals which closed earlier this, in this quarter itself. Effective tax rate for the quarter is 22.7%, an improvement of 300 basis points quarter on quarter. ETR improved due to credits received at foreign locations during the quarter, part of which are expected to continue for balance of the year. Total amount of outstanding hedges as on September 30th, 2023 was equivalent to $289.1 million against $246.7 million in Q2 FY24. On ESG front, as of Q2 FY24, we have taken specific initiatives to increase green energy components and reduce energy consumption to achieve our goal uh, to reduce greenhouse uh, gas emission by 11% compared to FY23. We have achieved approximately 25% green energy components in our energy mix globally. We continue our journey on water positivity with water generation exceeding water uh, consumption at our Pune campus. With that, I now invite Vijay Sinema, our Chief Operating Officer, to provide updates on business operations. <coughs> Thank you, Manish and Sachin. Greetings, everybody. Manish has provided insights about our business and Sachin has sh shared details about the key financial metrics. I will share details about our operational efficacy, service line performance, and capability enrichment initiatives. We are continuing our journey on operational excellence and making good progress on key imperatives like pyramid optimization, managing utilization in an optimal range, and calibrated usage of subcontractors while managing our on-site mix. Disciplined execution on these parameters enabled us to minimize the impact of wage increase on cost of delivery. Enhancement, enhanced fulfillment rigor enabled us to minimize the impact of volatile demands due to macroeconomic situation. 
This rigor enabled us to improve our utilization by 60 basis points. This quarter, we saw a good growth in many of our service lines. On a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, in reported terms, our advanced engineering service line registered a growth of 7.8%. Experience services grew by 3.1%. Application services and enterprise application services grew by 0.2%, while foundation services remained flat. Data engineering and analytics saw a decline. Our key service lines <clears throat> continue to scale up well, making up to 34% of our total revenues. We are continuing to deliver value to clients via our experience engineering engagement continuum of service offerings. As part of this, we have developed multiple assets that can help our clients navigate the complex AI ecosystem. These assets help our clients identify the right set of use cases and technology solutions to achieve competitive differentiation. We are accelerating our talent transformation journey to increase the depth and breadth of subject matter expertise of our employees on emerging technologies as well as appropriate business domains. With that, I now hand it back to Manish. Uh, thanks, Ajit. There are signs of continued softness due to difficult macroeconomic environment impacting customer technology spend decisions. We are carefully watching the demand environment and continue to stay close to our clients so as to respond to their needs and accordingly adapt our investment plans. Over the last four quarters, our thrust on client sensitivity, execution excellence, and employee-centric policies have yielded positive results. Continued focus on execution of strategy through accelerated go-to-market partnerships and sales rigor with the goal of investing in long-term growth remains our top priority. With that, we can open the line for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. The first question is from the line of Mr. Nitin Padmanabhan from Investec. Over to you. Yeah, hi, good evening, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, so I had a couple of questions on the deal win. So I, I think on the face of it, the deal wins look strong at a 1.3 times book to bill. Uh, normally, I would assume that uh, this would lead to a strong Q4. Uh, but uh, I, I think you made a few qualifications there saying there's a spillover and the renewals. So could you give some color there and uh, assuming a strong Q4 with these deals come flowing through into Q4 revenue, is that a wrong assumption? So just wanted your thoughts on how to think about this. Thanks, right, Nitin. Uh, Nitin has just said that uh, $194.8 million of the book uh, which you reported has spilled over from Q1. There are certain deals uh, which got spilled over from Q1 to Q2. And there are a couple of deals which uh, were, we were expecting to sign in Q3 got signed in Q2 itself. So not, uh, normalized run rate could be very close to what we reported uh, last quarter. It will be better than last quarter. Uh, um, now, as far as Q4 is concerned, uh, I think it's too early for us to give you any flavor and, uh, given uh, the circumstances uh, which we are dealing with. And uh, as Manish specifically called out, uh, the demand environment continues to be uh, challenging. And I think we will be only able to comment uh, on that uh, as we move forward. Right. So uh, uh, here's the challenge. So uh, 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 the broad thought process was that, uh, you know, margins will improve and we have done extremely well on margin and uh, growth should in, be tail ended. Uh, and at least on the face of it looks like based on the deal wins that it could be. Uh, now, what are the concerns that you have? Uh, now, I did uh, notice that high tech is down sharply, and maybe Q3 is soft because of furloughs. Uh, so, just wanted your thoughts to how to think about this. Do you think that these deal wins will not convert to revenue, or there are possibilities of delayed 
you know convert to revenue uh, no i think uh, the way we report orders orders go uh, the real wins will <coughs> convert as the entire 194.8 million is going to convert to revenues and the question is that you are filling the bucket from one end but we don't know what will be the leakage uh, of revenues due to furloughs and due to lower number of working days and so on and so forth in the quarter and so you can be assured of, uh, you can be assured that if you are showing 194.8 one it's a very precise number and two we will get those numbers fair enough and uh, lastly before i see the flow um uh, uh, what are the areas of worry from a vertical standpoint at this point in time um and uh, when do you think high tech can potentially bottom out um i think if you look at our performance overall except for high tech uh, as a vertical uh, we have done very well actually uh, we have done well in africa we have done well in uh, uh uk and europe we have done well in uh, financial services we have done uh, well in uh, consumer services um our experience services business is growing horizontals we are seeing growth pretty much everywhere so except for uh, high tech as a vertical um, the growth has been uh, uh, very very promising uh, across the board but uh, when will high tech recover i think uh that's a trillion dollar question not even a billion dollar question because uh, um uh, as you know today 70% of the capital spent uh, in the us economy is on technology and technology related products and uh, as we are seeing the uh, 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 elevated interest rate and quantitative tightening i personally feel that uh, we will see unless uh, we see uh, a dampening of interest rates and um, uh, you know dampening of uh, quantitative tightening i don't think it will be easy for the high tech industry uh, to turn, high tech as a vertical to turn around so oh, fair enough that's very helpful uh, thank you so much manish thank you sachin all the best thank you so much A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Shah from Equirus Security. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, just wanted to know within the high tech vertical, is it uh, pain within one top client, or these are pain? beyond top clients in some of the other top clients within high tech and the way i look at it is uh, these clients are a pain point for venture in terms of suppressing growth on a year over year basis so we can have two solution one is to open more purchasing window in these accounts or actually accelerate the growth in the other segments outside these accounts so with part we are looking in terms of diversifying and minimizing this risk which suppress the growth of delta year after year and then i have a follow up for the very last thing so um, uh, one is i am not as pessimistic about high tech as uh, you are uh, i think uh, uh, once we get our act together in this vertical um, it will turn around that's number one um, number two uh, as you've seen uh, we've added healthcare as uh, we have identified healthcare and life sciences as a vertical and uh, which we are going to put a special focus on uh, you can also um uh account open we open there we also opened uh, eight new logos uh, in this uh, in this quarter um so uh, there is a lot of action happening on the sales side and actually that is reflecting in the order book of 194.8 million that uh, has been talked about okay okay and just uh, in terms of the uh, rejuvenated uh, go to market accelerated sales growth aggression uh, manish is it fair to assume uh, the uh, road map in terms of quarterly tcb is on the up rather than remaining more or less uh, at the same range of 150 170 million dollar on adjusted basis 
I think as I mentioned in the previous answer, it will depend on, um, you, know, you have seen the order, order book number, I think it will depend on um, what we see in terms of uh, revenue leakage because of furloughs or specific client situations or, or anything. So it's just dependent on that. It's, a, it's an act that we need to, uh, it's a balancing act that we have to do every quarter. Uh, and as you know, uh, this quarter is a uh, Q3 is a very, very tough quarter for the entire industry because of furloughs and lower number of working days. Okay, okay. And second, just such in a question about first half normalized EBITDA margin, even if I strip off the runoff in the uh, second quarter, it looks like at 17.8%. And uh, the wage hike is largely behind, and we are still maintaining a mid team kind of a guidance. So, is it fair to assume the margin guidance is slightly more conservative, or do you see some unforeseen headwinds may be related to furloughs in the coming quarters? So, Sandeep, uh, furlough is a very much known uh, phenomena for the industry and uh, for us as well. So, from that perspective, uh, the guidance which uh, we provided uh, for the year actually baked that in. Apart from that, uh, as Manish said, uh, we have now created room for creating investment in our uh, capability building, in our uh, sales, uh, sales and marketing uh, department. So, from that perspective, that investment will definitely have some dilution from the current level. Uh, just, uh, just to reiterate on uh, CAT, I don't know how many of you noticed that uh, in the first half of this year, uh, we made more than the entire what we did in the entire uh, uh, last FY23. So, uh, at least uh, that's something that uh, we internally are very proud of. No, no, sir. I think well accepted by the investor community as well. Congratulations and all the best. I may come up to meet a doctor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Mihir Manohar from Camlian Asset Advisor. <laughs> When you mentioned the normal equity is 17 percent versus the reported number of 18.6 percent. Uh, so, what is the gap here, which is there, and what exactly is this? So, uh, the gap uh, is due to the one-time reversal of management bonuses uh, for FY23, which the decision was taken during the current quarter and. Reversal of that uh, has come in uh, the current uh, quarter's uh, p and As you all know that FY23 was not a very good year for us uh, as a company. And we have a very high performance-driven uh, criteria on the basis of which management of the company gets uh, its bonuses. Given uh, the performance, uh, we have seen uh, the one-time positive impact of 160 basis points uh, on the margin. So if you take that out, you know, the normalized margin would be close to 17%. Sure, understood. Yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. The next question is from NGN Purani from Inam Asset Management. Thank you. Uh, hi, Manish. I, I, Great quarter in tough times. Thank you, Mr. Buranik. I have a question about, you talked about capability building uh, and uh, pyramid rationalization. And these are the, the best uh, uh, leverage available for uh, an IT com services company. Uh, so if you can elaborate on uh, what all you are doing on the capability building. Uh, vertical, uh, horizontal capability building. Uh, at the yeah, so I'll, uh, request, uh, yeah, Mr. Puranik, I'll request uh, Vijay to address yeah, this sure. question. He's been doing a tremendous job 
Oh, excellent. In, uh, in managing uh, the pyramid and talent. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, hi. Uh, so on the capability building front, uh, we have um, um, basically two two dimensions. One is deepening the technology capabilities of our associates around the five service lines. Uh, that's associated with advanced engineering practices, which is nothing but cloud native uh, <clears throat> capabilities. Uh, we are also significantly increasing the capability of our associates around the experience services, as well as um, uh, uh, <clears throat> Oracle, SAP, Salesforce kind of a thing. Outside of that, uh, we see a strong um, um, market for AI and Gen AI. So as we speak, we have embarked on the journey of uh, upskilling our people um, across the AI, Gen AI spectrum, so that is completely fully enforced. And finally, given our growth potential, we see that we also need to like basically have our people uh, sharpen their domain skills because techno-functional skills are what is going to be the need of R to deliver value to our clients. So we are sharpening the domain skills as well. And of course, the uh, other things associated with leadership training, project management training, and things like that. So we have a very structured capability enrichment program with individualized learning path for each of our associates and that is beginning to yield results some more work to be done mm -hmm. uh, can you summarize in terms of uh, the capability of building which will you know you uh, you use it for uh, uh, client uh, operations so what, what are the key services your building capability is it uh, how big is the focus on analytics you talked about customer experience and engagement and others but in terms of analytics how big is the focus and no, no I think uh, uh, there, there's a huge huge amount of focus Mr. Pradhanik, on uh, experience services which hmm. includes um, you know, um, both the uh, design, uh, research, design, UI, and mm -hmm. customer experience. Uh, we have a very compelling practice on uh, data engineering and analytics uh, mm -hmm. already. And, uh, uh, and by the way, we have uh, integrated the generative AI mm -hmm. capability with our data engineering and analytics uh, capabilities because we believe that it is without data um, uh, there is no artificial intelligence it can only be artificial dumbness so uh, we have combined the two uh, and uh, we believe that all these uh, newer service lines are going to be big growth areas for us and we are actually seeing those uh, in the results and how many projects you have done uh, using analytics with uh, generative AI? There, there are, nobody has done any projects. Uh, and if they claim that they have done projects, it, it may be a single digit number. But we have done close to 100 uh, proof of concepts for our clients. Hmm. Uh, and not every proof of concept translates into uh, real projects. Hmm. Uh, because, because you know, the technology is still fairly nascent, no matter what right. people tell you, it hmm. is fairly nascent. It is not really ready for uh, prime time on the enterprise, especially on the customer side. So it can be both productive and predictive? Yes. Uh, from a productive yes. from a perspective yes. of improving your own operations and predictive yes. in terms of building solutions for the client. Yes, and uh, most of the use cases that we are seeing uh, clients use it for is more on the productive side rather than predictive side, hmm. because uh, you know on on your inside stuff you can afford a higher error rate hmm. than on the client facing stuff. So most of the use cases that we are doing POCs on with our clients and for ourselves actually. Mm -hmm. are, are related more to productivity improvement rather than predictive capability. Productivity improvement. And uh, so when, when you uh, say you're building capability at a different level, so uh, 
how do you leverage this how do you uh, is it is uh, using fixed price one option because fixed price projects are very difficult to manage because they, they go wrong on estimation either time cost effort value anywhere or scope mainly so but when you have people who have better experience capability uh, can, can you take a bigger risk of doing fixed price projects where the margins can be greater actually there, there are two ways of using this uh, this concept one is uh, as we found out with a certain set of clients that uh, certain clients that um, they didn't have the budget to do an all natural intelligence project hmm. by introducing artificial intelligence uh, and improving the productivity uh, in a low risk fashion we were able to reduce their overall spend by 50% Oh. And uh, then they had the budget to do mm. the the overall project. So that is one way of uh, doing it. Uh, mm. Fixed price. Uh, we are doing. Uh, we don't see the technology is so new that mm. we don't really want to take high, uh, high risk fixed price projects. But mm. proof of concepts, demos, etc. We are doing it on a fixed price basis, and it's not very risky. Mm. So the high. So much, uh, sorry, Mr. Puranik. Uh, we'll have. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. So the next question we have is from Mr. Ritesh Thakkar. You can talk to him. So uh, just had a question on the VHS part. Uh, for this part, uh, you indicated uh, on the HDN part, the impact was just very good. So is there any incremental or sudden impact to be expected uh, in future as well? Uh, actually, Pritesh, your voice was not very clear, but I'm assuming that uh, uh, you're asking me that whether uh, the one-timer will have any impact on Q3. Uh, if that's the question, then I have clearly called out that uh, the currently yeah. reported so, so what I was asking on the agent, you mentioned that the impact on major was for the bits uh, in this quarter. Yes. Yeah, so are we expecting any residual impact uh, for the next ten quarters? No, nothing. Nothing apart from what I called out. And uh, on the on the client side, uh, uh, on the client bucket, what is driving growth for the uh, beyond top twenty clients? Uh, because it reported nine point five percent GMT growth, while uh, the top twenty uh, clients declined uh, by four point nine percent. Anything to read there? Uh, what's the question there, Pritesh? Uh, on, using, uh, uh, if you're using a mic or a, a speakerphone, uh, can you please uh, speak into the phone? Your uh, voice has not been clear right from the beginning. Yeah, is it audible now? Uh, slightly better. Yeah. So I was asking on the client bucket, uh, like uh, what is driving growth for the uh, beyond top 20 clients? Uh, because it reported 9.5% QNQ growth while your top 20 accounts uh, declined by 4.9% QNQ. Uh, if you look at when Manish joined, at that point of time, he clearly called out that uh, we are going to start a new organization within our sales, uh, sales team, which will focus on the net new business uh, for the company. And for the last two quarters, there has been a lot of hiring which is happening over there. And uh, gradually, we definitely think that that engine will start picking up and will help us grow outside top 20 clients uh, for the company. And we are already seeing it, Ritesh, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, the uh, non-top 20 clients are growing faster. And this is primarily because of two things. One is uh, net new logos, and the second is, um, that in our smaller clients, we are doing much better on farming and hence trying to increase the numbers. Okay, understood. Uh, on the Q3, uh, on the Q3 quarter, I mean, uh, since we have this follows and uh, holidays coming in, uh, do we expect uh, uh, the impact to be in a similar line to what we had last year or you expect the growth, uh, I mean, uh, the growth to be a little uh, easier? Even we have this macro advent coming in. 
So it is normal if we don't give uh, forward-looking uh, guidance uh, on this subject, but what I can say is that uh, uh, it will be in line with last two, three quarters, uh, in fact, which you saw. Two, three years. Two, three years. Sorry. Two, three years, uh, in fact, which you saw. No, the reason why I'm asking is because we signed uh, uh, an strong PC this quarter, so I thought if there is any uh, ramp up coming in uh, from there, and we should be a little uh, bump up in Q3 uh, vis a vis the last year quarters. No, I think uh, uh, I think the furloughs are part of uh, the industry and part of uh, the numbers which we have been reporting over the years, and uh, we do feel that we will see the impact uh, of uh, furloughs uh, for Q3. Along with that, if you see, the macro environment is also definitely not helping us. So from that perspective, uh, you, can, uh, you can actually uh, take the impact which you saw over the last two, three years uh, in Q3. On the similar lines, we are expecting uh, given current situation. Understood. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Mr. Samir Dosani from ICICI Prudential AMC. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, congrats on uh, robust execution during the quarter in difficult times. Uh, on healthcare, if you can share some strategies, uh, I'm sure you've left from the GTN strategy and uh, leadership you've uh, conducted. So if you can share some some sort of strategy, uh, you know, uh, high level, uh, you know, pointers of what 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 is your thought process, and, and that will be helpful. The second part is on BSSI, right? So, in in times like these, uh, where where uh, expense from banks have have been very uh, are struggling actually, you, your growth has remained robust. So, what are those uh, parameters, or what are those? Things that you're doing differently, you know, it, it, it can just highlight what are what are the key differentiators there. Right? So I think uh, first of all on healthcare, uh, you know, we already uh, on healthcare and life sciences and retreat. I think we have a, a, a good without even calling it a vertical, we have had a good presence in life sciences and med med tech uh, overall, and a couple of healthcare accounts. Uh, we believe that. Uh, adding domain capabilities to this mix and uh, offering a broader range of our services to the healthcare sector, healthcare and life sciences sector will uh, yield uh, richer dividends than it was if it was hidden in the hidden in the emerging uh, area. So uh, we will start by uh, enhancing our domain capabilities. Uh, in this area and marrying our offerings with the domain capabilities uh, and take them to the market. Uh, that is broadly the incubation strategy, at least for the first uh, two, three quarters. Uh, BSSI, um, we, are doing, uh, we are doing quite well. Uh, I think uh, uh, two reasons. Uh, one is uh, in uh, VFSI, we, uh, uh, especially on the insurance side, uh, we have specialized in certain packages, and we have the both the technical depth and the domain capabilities to go deeper uh, into these areas. And once we have entered with this, uh, we have expanded using our other offerings. So that has uh, worked well. Uh, in uh, overall the uh, FSI uh, for us. Understood, understood. And for healthcare, you would have already inducted leadership, etc. That that process is is behind us. That's how we should think of. Yes, uh, I think uh, again, uh, as you know, I myself have a lot of experience in healthcare and life sciences, so I will uh, um, I will incubate the leadership. Uh, there and yes, we have hired uh, someone who can uh, who brings the requisite talent from both a domain and sales perspective. Understood. Understood. Thanks. Thanks for this. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Shah from Equus Security. 
Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the follow-up opportunity. Uh, just, Sachin, uh, wanted to understand, there is a dramatic improvement in the offshore revenue mix over the last several quarters. Even in this quarter, there has been a higher uh, improvement. So, is it fair to say, uh, in the last few quarters, the volume growth is much higher than the reported US dollar revenue growth? And a follow-up question in terms of gross margin tailwind, uh, utilization is higher. Uh, offshore revenue mix is higher. So are we still forcing some further headroom is spending in these two, three levers which can impact the gross margin? I do agree investment may impact the SDNA, not at the direct cost level much. And the third is, uh, what is the reason for absolute decline in depreciation and amortization? And whether the 2Q level is a normalized level of depreciation and amortization? Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have lost the management connection. Please stay connected while we reconnect them. Thank you for patiently holding. We have the management team back on the call. Yeah, am I audible now? Should I repeat the question? Yeah, Sandeep, uh, you, uh, Sandeep, I have your question. Earlier, when we used to have product revenues as part of our uh, portfolio, they used to get counted as part of on-site. Now, with our focus efforts on services revenue, as part of our revenue mix, has changed over last uh, two quarters, and that is also what is getting reflected in the offshoring numbers uh, uh, which are getting reported. Okay, okay. And uh, I had a follow-up uh, which I asked earlier itself, it may not be audible to you. Uh, is there a further headroom in the offshore revenue utilization rate increase going forward? And uh, what is the reason for absolute decline in depreciation and amortization? Whether Q2 level will be sustained or there is one off and it may increase from Q3? So let me answer the first question, a uh, second question, then I will hand it over to Vijay to answer your uh, first question. Uh, as far as depreciation is concerned, the acquisitions which we had done over the year, the amortization of that is uh, impacting, uh, the amortization has been coming down over the last few quarters, and that is what is getting uh, impacted. Uh, going forward, we believe that we will be uh, in this range, what we reported in Q2. Yeah, to your question about offshore uh, uh, distribution as well as utilization, I think, uh, we are now seeing that the offshore ratio is at a fairly stable level for our optimal level. So we don't expect a significant uh, movement from these levels. Utilization is also fairly optimal. It will be range bound depending upon the sensitivities associated with uh, uh, certain quarterly phenomena. Otherwise, I think we will operate in the current utilization range. 
Thank you so much. Uh, next question is from Sanjay. Devang Bhatt from IDBI Capital. Thank you. Hi, sir. Thank you for taking my question. So, uh, last time you had uh, you did that, you know, you will not target large deals till margins are stabilized. So, now that margins have reached comfortable levels, are you targeting any large deals and in which area are you seeing traction? Is there any large deals in the pipeline? And if yes, if you could elaborate the nature of that deal. Uh, actually, let me first start by defining what large deals are for a company of our size. And uh, anything with uh, 5 million ACV or 25 million TCV is what we consider as a uh, large deal. Uh, by de that definition, uh, we are working on a few deals. Um, I cannot quantify the deals uh, um, just now, but I can tell you that uh, at least uh, four or five deals we are working on. Uh, you know that the win rates on these uh, large deals and the competitive intensity is very high. So uh, we are not really projecting anything from these uh, deals just yet. But to answer your question, uh, yes, we are in the market uh, for large deals. And uh, I can also tell you that wherever uh, we have gone in, uh, we have been received well. We may not have won uh, the deal, but we have been received very well. well. So, so are we seeing cost efficiency kind of a deal or a digital transformation kind of a large deal? Uh, we are not seeing digital transformation kind of large deal. That is for sure. Uh, we are, uh, we are uh, seeing uh, large deals more in the cost of takeout space. And uh, sir, uh, you had said that you know the company's growth 95% comes from farming. So in high tech, uh, what are you doing to drive that growth in mining the clients in high tech? Well, I think uh, uh, in high tech uh, we are trying to change our sales force um, and enable them uh, to be much more proactive. Uh, number one. Number two, uh, we are trying to uh, build higher level relationships with our clients, build great relationships. And uh, number three is uh, our, our messaging uh, and our, our um, work in the uh, experience um, to engineering to engagement continuum is resonating very, very well. Uh, with our with our clients, I mean, you'll be surprised to know that in the high tech space, we actually work with some of the top clients in the industry. Okay, uh, and, and sir, uh, just last question: uh, in European region did very well, but which verticals uh, drove that growth? Uh, it was uh, uh, both uh, banking and financial services and uh, manufacturing and consumer services, MCS. Both of them did well for us. Oh, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, the next question is from the line of Chirag Shah from White Pan. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yeah, so my first question, yeah, thanks a lot for having So my first question is you mentioned the opening demands that data engineering and analytics have seen a decline. So can you indicate why it is and how do you look at it from a 12 to 18 months perspective? Oh, that, that is because uh, data engineering and analytics was uh, concentrated more in the high-tech vertical. And uh, okay. since the high-tech vertical declined, uh, there was a corresponding effect on digital, uh, on data and engineering and analytics vertical. So it is more industry driven rather than uh, application driven or at, or line business driven. Perfect. That is that is the right understanding, correct? Yes. Okay. The second question is uh, uh, is on the margin spend. Uh, so in your annual analyst meet, also you indicated your aspiration is lifting margins and and stability margins in a particular band. 
now since two quarters you are there uh, you are if, if i do h1 you are all you are almost there or uh, uh, and also your your aspiration to reinvest uh, in the business to build up capabilities may be at a slightly faster pace than what your peers have maybe do so uh, how should one look at margins from here on is there a case of research on the higher side or uh, is there a case of to be slightly cautious or these are normalized margins and if activity picks up there could be significant uptick that one can see so uh, we want to keep uh, as i said that first of all we want to bring predictability uh, in our margin create a trajectory in our margin in last 4 to 5 for, uh, for for last 3 to 4 quarters we have been able to work structurally towards that now as you know that though currently industry is growing through a tough uh, tough time but uh, as the growth returns we want to ensure that venture is ready to take advantage uh, of that growth uh, from the capability perspective as well as from the sales perspective so we have already started uh, investing in building up our uh, sales force that's the reason i specifically called out that on a quarter on quarter basis normalized sgnd has remained flat and we with this kind of margins we are creating headroom uh, for us to further invest into business into the areas in which we see uh, it is needed uh, to be invested so from that perspective i think our goal will be continue to be in the range of mid range margin anything over and above that in some or other way we want to invest back into the business and be ready for the growth when industry uh, turns around so uh, if if i can rephrase or summarize uh, current margin that we are seeing h1 are kind of normalized margin unless for a negative shock that comes across uh, in the business that is the right way to look at it so 18.6% is not mid teens it's almost adult no i am seeing i am excluding that uh, 150 bits and uh, and in looking at h1 excluding that 150 bits of reversal because it actually potential last year right Which, so, which these are the headrooms which we have created for ourselves, which we want to invest back. So, normalized margin which we as management team uh, team is targeting is meeting, which is between 14 to 16 percent. Anything more uh, over and above that will be reinvested in some or other form in, back into the business. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint. The next question is from the line of Nitin Padmanabhan from Investec. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just a quick bookkeeping one. Uh, uh, what is the proportion of net new in the total TCV? Uh, so, uh, see, so on an overall basis, my uh, exists uh, my EE is two third of my uh, book, and one third of my book is EN uh, and NN. And uh, my NN is in lower single digits uh, right now. Uh, Listen, two point five million. Sure, perfect. That's all. Thank you so much. Two point five million. Thank you so much. So the next question is from the line of Dipesh from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Just want to understand about the reinvestment and the margin trajectory. Typically, right now, let's say we are at 17 adjusted EBITDA margin, and 14 to 16 is the range what we indicated. Usually, what time period it require for you to optimally operate within that 14 to 16 percentage range? Because investment will take some time. But considering next two three quarters, so typically, how long it will take for you to start operating within the targeted range see if you look at our hiring process on the leadership is already on as manish clearly said that we have already uh, you know onboarded our healthcare leaders uh, as well and there are couple, uh, there are couple of other uh, hirings which are happening uh, in the company so from that perspective uh, the process is already uh, uh, you know going on and uh, we will see the impact of that uh, uh, in q3 and q4 so broadly by year and we should operate within the uh, optimal range of 14 to 16 where focus would be on accelerating revenue growth 
Is it right understanding? See, apart from that, we also have to see, uh, as one of your colleagues asked, you know, we will also need some investment uh, in case we win any large deal or some uh, something like that, correct? And as you know, that large deals uh, initially, at least for few quarters, are not a margin accretive uh, margin accretive uh, deal. So, in, if something comes our way, we want to in, ensure that uh, you know we are ready for that. And last question is about the uh, client and client mining related thing. Let's say we have roughly around 47 old clients giving more than 5 million kind of revenue. On top 20, we are seeing some weakness, and I think uh, obviously we always maintain that client mining is a long-term kind of growth potential in all those things. So just try to understand if you can give some sense in last two three quarters, the new client which we added, the quality of those client compared to obviously we are seeing some challenges in top 20, and there might be some mix change. If you can provide some qualitative expect in terms of the uh, kind of client which we are adding. So we are uh, going after our target account list is companies uh, greater than $2 billion in revenue. And uh, mostly we are adding, uh, the effort in adding clients is going towards those clients only. Uh, I mean, sometimes things, smaller clients come to us uh, with a larger project, we are happy to take them. Uh, but uh, our focus is always on uh, uh, companies with revenues greater than two billion. That's number one. Number two, I think uh, <clears throat> if you look at uh, the order book, uh, order book, I think the um, uh, the EN portion, existing new portion, um, is uh, pretty strong over the last uh, couple of quarters, uh, which means that the farming engine is uh, working and. Uh, farming engine is not only working, but it's working on cross sales, uh, so to say. So um, those are the two data points that I would like to share. Understand. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next question is from the line of Jalaj from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I just one question, so this is with regards to last communication we had. So, uh, sir, what would it take us to reach to quadrant one of the, in terms of the growth performance, because that is what we are alluded to, that is our target. So, in doing that process, what is lacking right now, or what, what, what sort of investments are what are, what is needed right now? And secondly, um, is the sales team supporting or the sales team right now in place or there are some major changes still required there? Thank you. Can you come off the uh, speaker phone and then ask the question, somehow oh, there was a lot of echo from your line. Sure. Is it better now? Yeah, little better. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so this is uh, first question is with regards to uh, the the last discussion in the analyst which we meet which was around the our target to reach to a quadrant one in terms of the performance growth wise. So uh, what would it take us to to be there? That is what uh, uh, the uh, where we want to be there. So that's one thing. And secondly, is the sales and sales the support team right now in place or there is still uh, some more uh, headcount to be added there or else, because I do see that there is a, a certain attrition there also. So these two questions. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> top quadrant remains uh, our goal. And as I said, we will not uh, reach that goal in one quarter or one year or so. Uh, what uh, I think we, we are targeting is that we'll move up a quadrant every year. Uh, so to say. Uh, currently, we are in the bottom. Uh, that is number one. On the second thing is uh, on sales. As far as headcount is concerned, uh, I think we are there. Uh, as far as quality is concerned, um, you know, the, the jury is still out there. And uh, we continue to look at uh, sales performance uh, at an individual level and uh, counsel people who are not performing. And we'll continue to do that.
Thank you very much. As that was the last question for today, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Manish Tandon for closer closing comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for spending time uh, this evening uh, with us. Uh, we hope we answered all your questions. Um, if there are more questions, we have a wonderful uh, investor relations team. You can address uh, your questions to them. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. On behalf of Motila Loswal Financial Services Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you, everybody.